so spice. Hmm, it's elemental. Source Bites from Source Elements. How to Zoom with Source Nexus on Mac OS X. You will learn how to zoom with Source Nexus control, how to use Source Nexus in Pro Tools, how to set up buses, and how to create AUX input channels, how to record yourself and your remote end. You need to create custom virtual audio drivers for Zoom in Source Nexus Control. Open Source Nexus Control from your Mac menu bar. Click the plus button on the top right of the Source Nexus Control panel to create a new device driver. Name your driver to Zoom and make sure it is two channel for stereo use. Click Done. Click the plus button again to create a second audio device driver. Call this From Zoom and make sure it is also two channel for stereo use. Click Done. If you have made a mistake, you can double click on the device you've created and you can change its name or its channel width. To delete a channel, simply hover your mouse over the device and an X will appear. Pressing that, will delete the driver. Why have we done this? We have now created custom audio drivers within the Source Nexus world for Zoom, so that when you go to Zoom, you can use these as your input and output devices, and then not really need to change them again, so it becomes set and forget. Just for your understanding, open sound in the Mac menu bar and it will show these new audio device drivers being accessible to your system. They correspondingly also show up in the Audio Media Setup app. Now open Zoom. Open its preferences by the commonly used Apple standard of Apple comma, and then select Video in the left-hand list. Select your camera. Mine is a C922. Select the Audio tab in the left-hand Preferences list. The first section is the Speaker section. In the Options tab to the right, select From Zoom as your output device. Scroll down to the Microphone section and then select To Zoom as your input to Zoom. The next section is Suppress Background Noise. Personally, I choose to select the option to Low as I'm allegedly a sound engineer and occasionally a grown-up and my studio is a quiet environment and I do not wish my feed to be adulterated. The next section is, without a hint of irony, the music and professional audio section. If you are outrageously daring enough to enable the original sound tick box, you will, when engaging this zoom hyperdrive mode, be sending stereo audio without echo cancellation, potentially savaged bandwidth, dodgy EQ, or secret police authoritarian level control. As always, your mileage may vary, and if in doubt, check the label and ask your mum. Now, go to Pro Tools. Open or create a new session. When you've opened or created the session, go to Setup in the menu bar and choose I.O. This opens up the I.O. setup page for the session. Click on the bus tab. Select New Path towards the bottom left. This opens the New Paths window. Create two new stereo paths by selecting the correct options and then click the blue Create button. When the bus paths are created, they will appear in the bus path list. Select the first ones, in this case bus 1 and 2 name box, to highlight it. Double-clicking will select the text and make it editable. Type to zoom, then hit return. Select the next bus that you created, in this case bus 3-4, and repeat the process, naming it from zoom. Click the OK button at the bottom right of the I.O. window to close it. You now need to create a new AUX track in Pro Tools. There are several ways to do this. 1. Control double-click either in the left-hand side track list of the edit window 
or on the left-hand side track list of the mix window. The second way is to press Shift Command N, which will bring up the new tracks window. Press Command and the sideways arrow, or use your mouse, to select stereo. Press Command and the down arrow, or use your mouse, to select aux input. Press Tab to enter the name box and enter Zoom. Press Enter or mouse the blue Create button. Select your channel colour poison of choice. I will go with the Zoom Blue. Turn the automation off by selecting Off in the Automation tab drop-down. You will now need to select the input to the AUX channel. Move your mouse to the I.O. Input tab in the Zoom AUX channel and select Bus and select To Zoom. This means that anything sent or routed to the To Zoom bus will feed the Zoom AUX track. Make sure the Output tab of the AUX channel is routed to your hardware monitoring output. This is mine. If we want to record the other end, we may change this later. Now select an insert slot at the top of the Zoom AUX input channel. I choose B. You need to instantiate a Source Nexus stereo plugin. There are several ways to do this. 1. Click your mouse on the slot you want and start typing Source Nexus and Pro Tools will auto-suggest and select the stereo option with blue. Hit Return. Or 2. Click on the Insert slot and from the drop-down forest, select Multi-Channel, Native Plugin, Other, Source Nexus Stereo. Phew, what a mouthful. Deselecting the red checkbox stops the plugin being closed when you open any other plugin window. In the Source Nexus plugin window, click the Send drop down menu and select the driver to Zoom that you created earlier. Click the Receive drop down menu and select the driver from Zoom that you created earlier. Now, to test the Nexus Zoom audio drivers, either create a test tone generator in slot A of the Skype AUX input or route a microphone to the to Zoom bus. I will show you both ways. 1. Click your mouse on slot A, the slot before the Source Nexus plugin, and then start typing Signal Generator. And Pro Tools will auto suggest the option with blue and hit Return. Or 2. Click on Insert Slot A, the slot before the Source Nexus plugin, and select Multi Mono Native Plugin Other Signal Generator Mono. It defaults to generating a minus 20 dB sine tone at 1 kHz, which is fine for testing. Open the Source Nexus plugin and you should see the tone being sent to the send side of the plugin, which is going to zoom. Alt tab to zoom to make zoom the foreground active ab. Open the audio preferences and in the speaker section, press the test speaker button and you should hear the familiar, eloquent Skype MIDI ringtone being played. Oh joy! When you are satisfied, deactivate the test tone in lozenges. Adjust the gain slider to taste. You can even record a test recording which will play straight back at you when you are finished, for your oral delight and reassurance. Alt-Tab back to Pro Tools. Now that you have finished with the test tone, Right-click the Signal Generator insert in the Mix or Edit windows and make it inactive. You can also make the plugin bypassed, which isn't quite the same as inactive, but has the same effect, and you can do this from the plugin window. The second method is to use a microphone. Create a new mono aux channel using one of the earlier methods. Turn the automation off by selecting Off in the Automation tab drop-down. Name it Mic and colour it appropriately. I use a fleshy pink for people and therefore microphones. Select your mic input in the I.O. section of the channel. If you don't want to hear your own mic, route the output to the To Zoom bus that you created earlier. Alternatively, for a slightly more flexible solution, 
route the output to a dummy bus. That's a bus that is routed to nowhere. Mine, in deference to the Beatles, is called Nowhere. Now create a send to get to the to Skype bus. I will use send A and select the to Zoom bus from the drop down list. Tap the mic or speak to check the levels and you should see the meters move on the to Zoom bus send fader, its source nexus plugin input and then correspondingly in the Zoom app itself too. If you want to record your mic, you can create a new mono bus, mic record, in the I.O. setup page. Route the microphone to that either by selecting the output tab in the mic channel I.O. or by using a send. I will use send E and making the output of that send mic record. Create a new mono track and label it mic record and colour it appropriately. Turn the automation off. In the channel I.O. tab, select its input from the drop down menu to be the mic record bus that you created earlier and route the output to your monitoring output. To actually hear yourself, select the record track to input monitor, the green eye button above the fader, or be in quick punch record mode, which you can either select in the options menu or shift apple P or shift click the record square in the transport menu until you see a P or right click the record square to bring up the record options. When record readied, the track will auto switch to monitor its input in either stop or record and in play, it will play back what's on the track until you either hit record or stop, just like a tape multi-track in auto input mode. If you want to record the output of Zoom, your remote end, go to the I.O. setup page and create a new mono bus. Name it Zoom Record. On the Zoom channel, route a send to that bus. I will use Send E and select the Zoom Record bus. Create a new record track called Zoom Record. Turn the automation off and colour it appropriately. Make its input the Zoom Record bus and route its output to your monitoring. It is considered good practice to monitor via your actual recording. If you want to monitor via the record track, change the output of the Zoom channel to the Nowhere bus. If not, and you want to monitor the Zoom channel direct as before, you can mute the record track output or fade the record track output fader down. You can test your routing by using the speaker test button in Zoom and checking the meters in the Zoom record track. If you have another piece of audio or video that you would like your remote end to hear, create a new track of the correct audio width, call it playback, colour it appropriately, turn the automation off, turn its input to no input, and send its output to your monitoring so that you can hear it. Create a send on send A, and route it to to Zoom bus. In Pro Tools, we use sends so that we can send a different level to somewhere compared to its channel output volume. If we have the need, we can also make the send pre-fader so that its level is not affected by the channel fader. Source bytes. Small, easily digestible, testing knowledge nugget videos to help your remote workflow. Source bytes. Hmm, it's elemental. Source bytes. From source elements.